So our next two um, talks are student talks, and the first one will be given by uh, Nick Cohn. All right, thank you for having me. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about the uh, coupling of a nearshore and a backshore model, um, specifically to, to look at the coevolution of the coastal zone in response to both waves and winds. Um, and this is really an international uh, collaborative effort. Um, as you can see here, there's a number of U.S. and uh, international institutions that are involved, and I'm just here representing the group today, talking about uh, our initial motivations for why and how we're going to uh, couple these uh, models together. So to motivate the problem, um, dunes have uh, long been recognized as being ecologically important. They provide value to uh, recreational beach users. Um, and as this news clip suggests, uh, they're really critical for limiting uh, storm impacts to uh, low-lying uh, barrier communities. So, um, so uh, even though the dunes are really important for, uh, for many reasons, uh, we have really have a poor understanding for how dunes evolve with time. Um, and for this reason, uh, we're particularly interested in uh, trying to understand the physical mechanisms in terms of uh, how dunes evolve with time. Um, so if we look at a wide range of conditions here, uh, we know that wind, uh, waves, and tides are, are particularly important for driving uh, near shore both dune and beach evolution. And you can see on the left-hand side here, there's a number of pictures that are showing um, where extreme total water levels cause erosion of the back shore. And this diminishes the value of, of these, uh, uh, these beach systems. However, on the right-hand side here, you can see a, a number of other, other uh, pictures where we have uh, very healthy beach systems. And this can be from a number of factors. It can be from, from uh, lower energy conditions. It can also be a combination of uh, sediment supply, vegetation, climate, uh, tectonics. Uh, there's a wide range of factors here that are all really important for, for beach evolution. Um, and this is what makes coastal zones really particularly um, hard to, to model uh, and to understand uh, the physical processes driving their evolution. Since many here are, are not coastal geomorphologists, I just want to walk through uh, some, some basic processes that happen on, on beach systems. So this is a, a system where we would have a dune, two sandbars, and the blue line here is just representing the low tide line. If we have a big storm um, that hits this beach, we notice that there would be erosion of the dune system, and some of the sediment could be transported offshore and, and form a large uh, subaqueous sandbar. During periods of lower wave energy, we could find that this uh, subtidal bar moves back on shore slightly. We have the generation of an uh, intertidal bar. Um, and we can see that the, the dune itself can uh, reform and actually become builder than, uh, bigger than it initially was. And even though these are complicated processes ha happening here, we, we can break up uh, the beach into three distinct zones. There's a near shore zone, uh, which is really where wave, uh, waves dominate and drive sediment transport uh, on the beach. Both waves and winds are particularly important. And in the back shore, you notice that there's uh, really um, not a lot of uh, geomorphic change. And this is uh, because ecologic processes really dominate um, in these areas, although winds are, are also equally important. This is some data from uh, one of the field sites uh, close to my university. Uh, so South Beach State Park is uh, the lower hand plot on, this, uh, on the left hand side here. And you can see that the shoreline here is prograded on the order of about a kilometer and a half in the past uh, 120 years. And this is largely in response uh, to the construction of the navigational inlet here and the, and the jetty. So on these long uh, century scale time scales, uh, longshore sediment transport is particularly important for the for evolution of coastal systems. So here the construction of the jetty limited uh, longshore sediment transport to the north and led to uh, large amounts of deposition um, right at South Beach State Park. Of course, there's lots of other processes occurring during this time. And if we look uh, on the right-hand side here, between 1998 and 2014, we see the generation of an entire new fore dune. Um, that's about 12 meters high, and this is driven largely by aeolian processes. So there's a lot of uh, sediment entering this, this system, and this is a, a largely uh, progradational system. On shorter time scales, this is some data from uh, 2014 at South Beach. Uh, so it goes from uh, the purple lines here are from July, uh, the red lines go to uh, September, so about two month period. We did a number of bathymetric and topographic surveys at this location. We say that there's an onshore migration of a subtidal bar here. Uh, this blue line here shows an intertidal bar, and this, fe this feature actually migrates onshore throughout the summer and leads to the progradation and, and the accretion of the upper beach. Um, so here there's really complex subtidal processes happening here. 
um, and there's a lot going on in the intertidal zone and, and the back shore. So both um, in this intertidal zone and the back shore, both aeolian processes and hydrodynamic processes are, are important for the evolution. So there's a large range of processes, time scales, and space scales um, which are occurring um, along the coast. But as I pointed out before, we, we can really break up the beach into three different systems, the near shore zone, uh, the beach itself, and uh, the sub-aerial back shore zone. So if we want to think about modeling uh, these systems, we can use the same general framework. Um, if we want to model uh, the near shore, we need a model that can predict uh, waves, currents, tides, uh, sediment transport, and of course, uh, net morphology change. Um, on the beach itself and in the back shore, we need an alien model that can, that can account for wind transformation, uh, saltation of sand grains, uh, morphology change, and, and of course, and, uh, as I pointed out, vegetation is, is really uh, important. Um, in these systems. And on the beach, the, the center area here shown in, in purple, we need both, both models. Both wind and waves are, are particularly important. Um, and not only uh, do we need uh, to model their, their, de their development, but we also need to model the, the feedbacks between the two systems. Um, so the near shore and the back shore are, are dynamically linked. Um, so for example, uh, wave runup is a, a basically limits uh, how much uh, area on the dry beach there is. And this plays an important role in terms of the fetch length in terms of wh where there's, uh, or how much saltation, saltation there is. Uh, in turn, if we have a big storm, this can remove sediment from the beach uh, via wave action, and this limits the sediment supply um, available for saltation. And also, um, if we have significant uh, wind, this can um, lead to the development of, of a steep dune system, and changes in the slope of the beach have feedbacks on wave propagation as well. So there's really dynamic feedbacks that we have to account for in this system. Um, so it can't be a, a loose coupling between these north shore and, and back shore model if we want to predict uh, net uh, coastal evolution. So the two models that, that we're using are X-Beach um, and the Coastal Dune model. And both of these are now in the systems repository um, and are both open source models. So X-Beach is a phase average infragravity wave model. It's depth averaged um, and 2D in space. You can see a visualization here of basically wave propag waves propagating into the near shore, and, and uh, the variations you see here are due to wave runup. Um, as I said, it's, it's open source and it's under active development, um, uh, in large part from Deltaris and, and UNESCO. And it's been heavily validated for both hydrodynamics uh, and sediment transport, particularly under storm conditions. Uh, the coastal dune model was recently added to the systems repository um, and has been in active development um, from UNC Chapel Hill and also the University of Bremen. Um, and accounts for uh, saltation, transport, and deposition, and, and the novel advances uh, of this model are particularly with the, the coastal vegetation modules. Uh, so up to this point, I've talked uh, a little bit about uh, why it is that we, we want to couple these models together, uh, the important processes that are happening on, on on beaches, I mean, also the types of models that we're using to answer these questions. Um, but if you look at this plot, you should also think that um, you should also think that these, this is really a complicated system, and can we actually use models uh, to predict this type of change? So I just want to show uh, one simulation using the X-Beach model. So this isn't the coupled model; this is just um, X-Beach. Uh, the blue line here is a profile measured from uh, July 28th of last year, and the red line is from August 29th. So this is about one, uh, one month, and this is the same data that I showed earlier. Uh, at the upper panel, you see significant wave height and uh, wave period. So these are going to be the primary drivers of uh, sediment transport um, in the subaqueous regime. And once I start playing this video, um, you will no you'll notice that the black line will go up and down, and this is the tides changing with time, which gives a reference frame for um, where we have uh, active wave breaking. And I should point out, uh, this doesn't seem to want to go away. It's okay. Uh, I should point out that the model is being driven by the full directional wave spectrum, if you're a coastal geomorphologist, um, and the measured tides from uh, Nortec AWAC that was located about 10 meters offshore. Uh, so we, the dotted line here is the, the model result, which is evolving with time. And we see that uh, uh, these features, both the subtidal and the intertidal bar, are migrating onshore um, faster when the, when the wave heights are, are larger. Um, Simulation is almost done. So what we notice at the end of the simulation 
uh, is that the model did a, a decent job of recreating the onshore migration of the subtitle bar. A uh, number of process-based models have, have been shown to be capable of doing this. We also showed some uh, accretion in the upper swash zone. Um, and we did predict the onshore migration of this intertidal bar, although there's an excess amount of sediment. Um, and presumably this is related to uh, excessive erosion in, in uh, this subtital regime here. So the model is actually doing uh, uh, a fairly good job of, of predicting onshore sediment transport, uh, both of the subtitle bar and the intertidal bar, although there, there's uh, some problems associated with this simulation. This is with pretty limited calibration. It's also uh, running this model in 1D, whereas this is a highly uh, two-dimensional two problem. Uh, I just showed this simulation of onshore uh, bar migration, and uh, this is part of my thesis work in terms of understanding how these cross-shore processes in terms of the welding of intertidal bars to the shoreline actually provide a, a pulse of sediment that uh, then al allows for dune building. Uh, so at this particular beach, at South Beach, we have a progradation of the dune on an order about two meters per year. Uh, so one of the focuses of my, my research is trying to understand uh, how cross-shore cross processes supply sediment um, to, the near, to the intertidal zone and how that sediment is then worked into the dunes via aeolian processes. And using a, a coupled nearshore and, and backshore model is particularly important um, to be able to, to model this behavior and look into the future. So I'll just conclude with the fact that there's uh, really complex feedbacks between the, uh, in, in the coastal zone. And this really requires um, using a, a coupled model platform and thinking about the whole coastal zone as an integrated system. Um, and with this, we're using x Beach and the coastal dune model uh, to look at a wide range of uh, spatial and temporal scales. And uh, as I also pointed out, this is an informal international collaboration, um, which I guess we're, we're loosely calling the shoreface beach dune interaction. Um, so with that, if there's any time, I'll take questions. Can you clarify, uh, if you use, look at your measured uh, beach profile, and if you do a mass balance, do you see imbalance that probably suggests big long shell transport or is pretty balanced? Um, yeah, so uh, in this particular site, about half of, half of the sediment is being worked onshore via cross shore processes, and about half of it is being exported via long shore sediment transport. Um, all of the data I showed there was from the summer where waves are predominantly from the north. So there's a, there's a net export of sediment to the south. Yeah, so um, actually this is the field site here. Um, so the dunes can be about 10 meters high and of course uh, it's very dense vegetation once you get over the fore dune itself. Um, but you can see that there, there is, even on, on the face of the dune, there is significant vegetation and, and that does, um, is important for the dynamics as well since it basically limits uh, sediment transport to, to the, uh, beyond the dune itself. Um, so it basically reduces the shear stress and it causes deposition of sediment. slide seemed to suggest that the nearshore model wouldn't be relevant behind the dune, but if you're looking at long enough time scales to include overwash events, I would think both models have to have to be important in the whole domain. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this was just a sort of general uh, schematic, but of, of course uh, we could have overwash that, that causes sediment to, to wash over uh, the beach, and in that case, um, you know, we did need to extend the, the boundaries of, of these models to account for all the relevant processes. Um, so, uh, I guess the, do the domains can shift depending on both the location and, and the timescales and processes that you're interested in. Yeah. 